family, welcome back to another episode of Courtney's Corner. I hope you had an amazing week because today we'll be discussing a topic that is very relevant and something that I think needs to be talked about more frequently, and that's financial literacy. As people of color, as millennials, we tend to be uneducated about what financial literacy is. We don't talk about it, nor are we prepared to make thoughtful decisions when it comes to our finances. As we approach our 30s, we often end up in significant levels of debt as a result of our lack of intentionality around financial planning. If you feel that you're in a place where you would like to learn more about the historic and current context of economic wealth in this country and would like to be more purposeful with your money, then you've come to the right place today. We're discussing our debt, practical management, solutions, and financial stability. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right here on Courtney's Corner. Thank you for joining us back. Research reveals that wealth disparity between black and white families will take 228 years to close. The medium wealth of white families is 12 times higher than that to black families. And this gap is continuing to grow. The Institute for Policy Studies reported that if the gap continues to widen at its current pace, the medium wealth of black families will fall to zero. Institutionalized racism and structural inequities have prevented blacks in this country from having access to generational wealth and financial assets for hundreds of years dating back to slavery. This has made it difficult for communities of color to attain financial security and opportunities in general, such as access to better education, health, and jobs. However, millennials of color have been recognized as a large group of individuals who can use their education and innovation to begin to shift this unpromising wealth gap through increasing our knowledge of financial literacy, building our credit, making strategic moves to pay down our debt, and thinking intentionally about our futures through investing in a home and own ownership and retirement funds, we might be able to begin to change the narrative. I have none other than Jeffrey Ulysses. Yes, sir. Ulysses. Yeah, Ulysses. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you for having me. Thank um, you. First and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Jeff Ulysses. I am the CEO of JU Consultants. I'm also the co-founder of Alchemic Solutions. What JU Consultants pretty much is, is we're a youth development educational company that provides financial services to parents, families, um, and in addition to that, mm -hmm. we also provide social emotional programming. Uh, Alchemic Solutions, I'm the co-founder of that, and so okay. basically what we do is we uh, work with young men of color and mm -hmm. teach them emotional intelligence yeah. uh, and equip them with transactional language. And so it's been pretty fun, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of cool. them, but, uh, cool. just a little bit. And I'm also an author of the book here, yes. All About My Money. Yes, please talk about this real quick before we get into the conversation. Because <laughs> yes, first of all, it seems to be dope. So let's talk yeah. about what was, the, what was the reasoning behind writing this? What inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, it was actually interesting. Uh, what inspired me to write that book was I was actually on tour recently with mm -hmm. Capital One and the Brooklyn Borough President, and we were um, in 18 community districts in Brooklyn, and so we traveled, you know, from different um, neighborhoods and high-need areas, mm -hmm. and so we stopped off in Bed-Stuy, you know, and we stopped yeah. off in Brownsville, and as you guys know, Brownsville is the poorest neighborhood in all of New York City. Yeah. And as we were in these high-need areas, I looked at the young people mm -hmm. and um, I just I, I just I just felt so overwhelmed. I just felt so overcome. Yeah. And just with a lot of different emotions and I just mm -hmm. it had dawned on me that Courtney in that moment, and I was just kind of just having, we were having real talk with these kids, and mm -hmm. these kids were crying, and these kids were coming from, you know, shelters and, right. you know, temporary housing and different situations, and, you know, whatever the narrative is for them. Mm -hmm. But it was just crazy because in that moment, I was just like, you know what? Poverty is really an FTD. It's a financially transmitted mm. disease, mm. right? And so, <laughs> I like, I like. yeah, yeah, man. And so when I realized, I said there is a need for mm -hmm. vaccination, and the vaccination is financial literacy. Right. And so I, des I, you know, decided to say, you know what, I'm going to write this book, uh, and I want to teach youth and young adults and millennials how to build, manage, and sustain wealth, mm -hmm. but also to create access and equity. Right. So we talk about you know wanting to create these things, right, and giving yeah. people who need them this vaccination, but one of the things that we kind of need to be honest with us about is people don't even know what that means. Yeah. They don't know what financial literacy means. You know, yeah. when was the first time you can say growing up you had a conversation about 
financial literacy? You know, I, I definitely didn't have that conversation in schools, mm -hmm. but I had it with, you know, mentors. You yeah. know, my mentors taught me, you know, about financial literacy. They taught me about money. They taught me about mm -hmm. how to manage money. And then I started to, you know, I grew a, a desire, you know, to learn right. for myself. And so mm -hmm. I began to, you know, invest in books and resources. And I just started studying and showing myself approved. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how I kind of got into the world of money management and budgeting mm -hmm. and, and the right. world of financial literacy. But were you able um, to kind of get out of that stereotype. I know a lot of us, even myself, this will be completely honest, mm -hmm. I found myself in a lot of debt because I wasn't aware, you know, going through high school, you know, to be completely honest, yeah. we were coddled, you know what I mean? We were coddled, we were spoiled, so yeah. going got into the real world, we were not as prepared as everybody said we were. Okay, we were educated on social studies, yeah. you know, and, and English, but we were not financially ready for the burden that was going Absolutely. to come with college when it shouldn't have been. Absolutely. So, um, like for you, were you able to escape through the, were you, did you, did you too face financial, you know, pressure and difficulties as going through? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, our first, our, you know, first year in college, mm -hmm. you know, literally like day one, we opened yeah. the doors, you know, you went through, we went through orientation, but as we're moving mm -hmm. through the hallways, you got all your credit, you know, you yes. got all your banks lined up. <laughs> yes. Like, hey guys, you guys want to want to open up a credit card, mm -hmm. you know, and just you know sharing, you know, their their um, their rates and hey, you yeah. know, hey, zero interest and, and mm -hmm. everything like that, and hey, we also got some cash back programs. Right. We're like, hey, you know. It just this great opportunity, we all got sucked into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right, it's just like, yo, why not? And then you talk about money, like that's like the right. root of all evil at, at one point, because <laughs> I'm like, oh, $300, okay, you bring know, it on. The little new, you right. have to actually pay that back. You gotta pay you that, know that back, saying, right. so. and then you're like, damn, right. um, so yeah. about that. Right, so like, you know, this becoming more aware, and for me, I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to financial literacy. Can yeah. you explain some? Well, I, t to be honest with you, you know, mm -hmm. I think that the misconception is that I believe that money is um, money is a tool, right. right? And so, and I think we see money. You see, we have to get into an understanding how we see money because mm -hmm. how we see money determines how you use money. Mm -hmm. And so, if you see money as a tool, right. you'll realize that money is designed to work for you, mm -hmm. not you for the money, right? right? And so. You think of money can be like, for example, like it's a tool, right? The hammer. Right. Why are we? Why are you working for the hammer? The hammer is designed to work for you. Right. And so I think in our communities we have to understand that. Hey, listen, money is a tool. Mm -hmm. It's a resource. Right. You know what I mean? And also the other misconception is that we live in a world where everyone's pursuing the bag. Everyone's chasing the money. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be chasing, chasing after it. money. Right. You know what I mean? Chasing after money is like it's like trying to grab, you're trying to grab a, you know, trying to chase after the wind. You're trying mm -hmm. to catch the wind. How can you right. catch wind in your hand? Yeah. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like you know those cash grab machines right mm -hmm. you know what I mean you're trying to just catch money in a cash grab machine right. you know you're not you're not supposed to be chasing money mm -hmm. but what you should do is chase value because value because money is attracted to value yes, yes. so if I chase value for pursue value then mm -hmm. money yes. is ears or have them pick it up <laughs> I and, love and it. follow and follow me I love right it. so in like we, we talk about we're talking about financial literacy like in a broad spectrum yeah right can we can you kind of explain your thoughts on it in like cultural like this or us as black people in, in, in America right now, you know, Hispanic people in America right now. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on them when it comes to financial literacy? Well, I, I think that, you know, where there we, there's a misrepresenta misrepresentation of mm -hmm. ownership. Um, I right. think that we just stay in the conversation of just loaners mm -hmm. and borrowers. Right. Um, but I think that we need to transition, right, and into a space of ownership, to a right. world of ownership, so right? Basically, like changing the narrative. Changing the narrative, spinning the narrative, and mm -hmm. saying, hey, look, we're moving from, you know, I'm no longer going to be a loaner, but I'm going to be an owner. Right. I'm no longer going to be a, a borrower, but I'm going to be the one who's in a position to lend. Mm. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Right. And so, and I think that we need to be, uh, we need to, shake the culture and shift mm -hmm. the culture uh, right. and change the narrative, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and open up more um, LLCs, limited liability corporations and companies and things of that nature. And what you do is because, for example, myself, I'm a single member LLC, mm -hmm. right? But what I can do is right. you can actually open up, you can open up membership. And so to create generational wealth for you and your family, mm -hmm. what you could do is you can add your members, add your family as members of the LLC. And now you're creating generational wealth and now we're shifting the narrative. Right. Right, because in reality, the narrative was that we we are we are broken financially right. because our parents and then their their parents were right. financially broken because they weren't right. educated. So it was just like a, a, it's a, a cycle, cycle, right? A right. cycle, yeah. and we're gonna break. Exactly. We'll be right back with more conversation with Jeffrey. Appreciate it. We're back with you, Jeffrey. So, um, 
before we get into the question from some of the viewers that I had asked in the midst of the trying to put the episode together, I did ask a couple of people some questions, so they do have them for you. Okay. So one of the questions that I'm going to ask, I, I, I got you guys, I'm going to do my best. So one of the questions is, do you wish that you did anything differently in regards to your personal finance journey and what lessons have you learned? Absolutely. Um, savings. I wish I had a relationship to saving mm -hmm. at an earlier age, yeah. um, rather than you know trying to save now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at twenty, at twenty nine. Yeah, <laughs> you know right, what I mean? right, right. You know, because what I find, what I've discovered now uh, is that seeing is, is is that saving is connected to seeing. Mm, yes. So how far you can see determines mm -hmm. how much you can save. Right. It's so true. And for me, I wish I was more purposeful. I, I wish mm. I was more serious, like aware. aware and conscious, mm -hmm. um, you know, of my purpose, right? And right. Of my identity and, and just what I wanted to do mm -hmm. because you know, at, at because if I had, if I was thinking ownership mm. at 15. And not lending and borrowing. And not lending and borrowing, yes. it was, I'd yes. have been in a different space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now at, at, at 20, you were you know, kind of like trying to change 20, that. Right, I'm trying to right, exactly. I'm trying to I'm trying mm -hmm. to shift and change that. And so at 25, I could already had my, my first home. I could right. I could have had property. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just wish that I had the mindset, the frame of mind that I have now, right. and the consciousness now. Like I'm mm -hmm. now, I'm financially woke now. Right. Right? <laughs> right. I wasn't before at all. And so I wish I did have a relationship to saving. I wish I had a relationship to money management. I remember just mm -hmm. my first job. I spent my entire check on clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and in that moment, what I was doing, well, really, during those years, I was literally, Courtney, I was feeding my wants mm -hmm. and starving my needs. Right. Of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? It had no relationship to needs and wants. Mm -hmm. And so I was literally just... Basically, like living above our means. Living above your means. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, and living below your means now, it's, it's not necessarily, you know, that you're a not going to be able to... A bad thing mm -hmm. that you're going to live, you know, right. that you ne you'll never get there, but you're living by your means mm -hmm. so that you can afford to live... Ab right. above your means later you know, on later right. on you right. know? so yeah so I think probably okay. relationship to save um, the next question is what is your perspective on the contributions contributions that Millennials of color can make to close the wealth gap well I think that there's so currently now in terms of in terms of closing the wealth gap mm -hmm. there's a conversation now about Millennials right we're ta we're super talented uh, super gifted yeah. um, the use of social media we can mm -hmm. monetize right. social media uh, I think that we need to create passive income for ourselves mm -hmm. uh, you know and in the conversation of passive income something that you can do one time mm -hmm. you know or you know just generate with minimal upkeep and that'll generate right. revenue for you mm -hmm. and so you look at there's so many different ways you can open up a YouTube channel. You right. can open up a show. You know, if you're an artist, uh, you can you know uh, you know come out with an EP, come out with an album, come out mm -hmm. with CDs. And there's CD Baby, there's Distro Kid. Right. Literally, uh, there's platforms out there, you know, yeah. that are designed you know mm -hmm. to help you produce passive uh, to create and produce passive income. Mm -hmm. You know, even the, the thing with Distro Kid now for artists is it's a free platform and you get your music on title. Right. Everybody wants to be an artist nowadays, mm -hmm. right? You get your music on title. Title, Apple Music, all platforms, right? Yeah. And the, the the dope thing about it, Courtney, is that you get a hundred percent of the royalties exactly. straight to mm -hmm. you. So again, so I think we as millennials, we're super creatives, right? Right. So let's start creating some passive income for ourselves. Even you know. Um, Amazon, there's tons of mm -hmm. opportunities for passive income there, and just right. there's so many different things that we can do. So I think you know, getting in that space would, would be beneficial to right. millennials. And I think also too, like this starting from where you know you have to learn it, like starting from young, like mm -hmm. with the school system. I feel like sometimes the school system is out to this take. Like, yeah. take, take, take. Oh, yeah, you're educating us, but on what? Are those principles important? Well, you know what? See, see here's my, I, I respect education, right? Mm -hmm. I respect education, and so my take on that, right, is I believe that the pristine standard mm -hmm. um, and, and, and design of education is meant to uh, edu, right? It comes from, right. The, from the Latin word to draw out, to lead out, mm -hmm. to bring forth, right? So education is designed to bring forth and to draw out your giftings and your talents mm -hmm. so that you would be knowledgeable and marketable and transactional and desirable in the marketplace. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so our, our culture and our educational system, what mm -hmm. I believe is that we put too much of the emphasis on preparing our kids for employment rather than deployment. Deployment, right. It's so true yeah it's so true um can you talk a little bit about your program that you yeah. have with 
with your business partner. Oh, again? yeah, 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 Purvis. for sure. So uh, my brother, my friend and business partner, Purvis Taylor mm -hmm. and I, so we have a program. It's called Alchemic Solutions. Okay. And uh, that program is we work with young men of color. Mm -hmm. uh, and we teach them emotional intelligence. Um, and we really equip them with transactional language. And so we've, uh, we're have we contracted out with, with the mm -hmm. uh, City University of New York. And so okay. we've, we've been on tour for uh, since for about a you know a couple months now, mm -hmm. going through the CUNY system. And it's been right. great just to be able to help young people process and cope and deal with their emotions mm -hmm. um, so yeah man so where did how did that come about like how did this program even give birth to itself like, yeah you know it's funny I was I was speaking on a panel I was invited at a, at a high school in Brooklyn uh, mm -hmm. about like six or nine months ago yes. and I was speaking on a panel and Purvis was actually invited on the panel as well okay and so literally we're literally finishing each other's sentences and we mm -hmm. literally had just like just a synergy you yes. know it's just like it was actually kind of crazy like mm -hmm. creepy actually <laughs> you know it's like yeah it's like yeah we're super, right. super connected like it's way too connected yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. for real and so so, you know, and literally after the panel, you know, we had a dope time. We kind of had some small talk. Mm -hmm. And um, the day after, you know, yeah. Purvis, he texted me. He's like, yo, how can we make some money together? Mm -hmm. You down? I'm like, yo, why not? Right. <laughs> you know, we, you know, and literally a week later together, we landed our first $10,000 uh, 10, check together. Wow. And then from, since then, we've just been, mm -hmm. I mean, it's been So ridiculous. where can people find out more about this program? Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys can find out our program. Uh, you can hit me up directly. Hit mm -hmm. him up directly. Uh, his IG is per at Purvis Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, my IG is at Jeffrey Lissy. Yeah. Um, hit us up, man, we'll, and we'll definitely, you know, and stay connected about with you. Finding out things. I know you have this book, which guys is a good read. So I'm gonna look a good read. <laughs> but let's talk about a new book that you have coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my new book coming out, Courtney. Mm. Um, and this is uh this is a. I really feel like I was really in my bag with this project. Right. I was like deep <laughs> in my bag on this project, man. And um, it's definitely uh, a lot better than this first one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this this book is called From Passion to Profit, and so we're teaching mm -hmm. youth and young adults and millennials how to uh, monetize the things that they love, right? Yes. How to uh, because I believe that your I believe that your passion can pay you, mm -hmm. and that you can profit from your passions, and which so which is the goal, which is the goal, which right? The goal. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that. Um, and again, this book, really, it's focused on preparing young people, not for employment, but mm. for deployment, right? right. Um, it's encouraging and empowering young people to say, listen, you know, don't settle for anything less than the life that you're capable of mm -hmm. living, yeah. you know? And so, uh, and one of my favorite, you know, just kind of pieces in this book that, I'm, uh, that I've written, um, I, in my farewell kind of chapter and closing, yeah. I, I share that I share the two what I believe to be the two greatest tragedies in life. Which One, are. which are uh, to live with no purpose and to die with potential. That's deep. <laughs> that hit me like, give me chills. It's not, that was, yeah, it's, it's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, it's man. So, so real. you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about this project, man. It, it really, again, it, it um, I also talk about hard mm -hmm. skills and soft skills yes. uh, and, and just the relationship between your gift and your passions that mm -hmm. it should be a harmonious union. It should be a harmonious relationship between yes. that. Um, I, we talk about value. We talk about the measures of value. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, again, we just want I just personally, I just really want to um, just to open the eyes of young people just to mm -hmm. not it's, it's not about money right? right again it's not about chasing money mm -hmm. right but it's about chasing value right? right pursuing value and purpose and being missional and purpose driven mm -hmm. um, and filling a need and filling a void in the marketplace right? right and so that's really what it's about and I'm excited about this project and I'm excited for summer. you Jeffrey thank you so much Appreciate for coming it, out if you guys want to find any more about Jeffrey follow us according to corner89.com we'll be right back thank you so much Appreciate it, brother. Okay. Everybody, the second guest we have with us today is one of my best friends. We've known each other since we were little kids. Give it up for Taniqua Stevens. Hey, guys. T, how you doing, baby girl? I am awesome. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's so, I'm so excited to hear your voice. I haven't spoken to you in eons. Um, yeah. I feel like the only time we've really kind of spoken was through social media. Which is good, yeah. but I miss your face. Um, oh, I'll miss you too. So tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, let me first say that I am thankful for you, Courtney. I am uh, very inspired by everything that you're doing, everything oh. that you've been through, and, Thank you. and everything that you survived. So Thank I just want to say that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, well, I am 29 years old. I currently reside in Dallas, Texas, but I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I graduated from Boys and Girls High School, as you know. I currently uh, 
work in the mortgage industry, but I also am a credit agent. I help people rec uh, repair their broken credit. Okay. So how did you get to that place, the credit agent part? Um, was it something that you were always interested in, or did you just happen to find your way there? I kind of found my way there uh, primarily because I used – uh, previously, I used some agencies, and I didn't get the results that I wanted, so I started researching on my own and looking looking up uh, on my own things that, things that tools that I actually needed to be successful in my uh, credit repair, so that's kind of how I initially got the niche for it. Okay, um, and now you know we're talking about financial literacy, so what does it mean to you? What does, what does financial literacy mean? mean to you and why do you think especially now in this day and age why do you think it's so important uh, uh first uh financial literacy is very important it's also important to understand the definition of financial literacy mm -hmm. uh, financial literacy is defined as the education and understanding of knowing how mi how money is made spent and saved as well as the skills and ability to use financial resources to make decisions. Okay, all right, and we think about decisions and importance. Why do you feel as though we weren't included in that growing up in high school? Like, we, there was no, but there, were, there weren't any courses or any classes that put that into perspective for us. You know, a lot of it was just geared towards us going to college, you know, being in college, yeah. getting a degree, but not really stressing the fact that it's money, right? It's basically yeah. a business, and you're going to end up, in most cases, being in debt. You know, not so we weren't financially prepared for this. We weren't financially educated. And like I was stating to you earlier, a lot of us are now in bad places where our credit is shot, we're in debt, in six-figure debt at that. And then we're expected to do so many different things in our lives that we honestly don't have, we don't have the money for, we don't have the credit for. Um, why do you feel as though we were not prepared? Or why do you, um, what can we do to better prepare the generations coming up now? Those are uh, awesome questions. A lot of it is the stinky thinking. Mm -hmm. You can't pick something that you don't know. So uh. we... We come from generational debt. It's, right. it's, it's passed down from one generation to another generation, that bad thinking, the bad habits, right. the overspending, uh, spending more than you make, uh, not saving. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times we tend to, uh, if things are out of sight, then they're out of mind. Right. And we believe that we can just get more money and just continue our life, but credit is king. You mm -hmm. need credit to do absolutely everything. Right. They're looking at credit for jobs. They're looking at credit for loans, for homes, for apartments, for everything. So you cannot get around being financially stable. Mm. So um, just to talk to the people a little bit, can you tell them about your financial challenges and what you did to overcome them? Awesome, awesome. I would love to share that. I remember being 17 years old, graduating from high school, and uh, around that time, my legal guardian had passed away. Uh, and my family, we didn't really talk about finances to talk about money right. or anything like that. So what I, I really didn't understand that I didn't know anything until I got out on my own. Right. And to survive, because I've been homeless, I've lived in a shelter, I've had a lot of obstacles, and, and you just get that mentality to, to survive, do whatever mm -hmm. you can to survive. And when you look up again, you're in debt. Right. Right. I had to I had to cut I had to cut back. One of the things that I started to implement in my life was the 50 30 20 rule. And what does that mean? So the 50 30 20 rule, um, there's four major points. Uh, that you calculate uh, your after tax income. And if you're a business, it means your gross income minus your business expenses. Mm -hmm. You limit your needs to 50% of your after-tax income. Limit your wants to 30%, 30%, excuse me, spend 20% on savings and debt repayments. Okay. You gotta budget your money. You, right. A lot of times we tend to look at that before tax 
that the excuse me before tax number, mm -hmm. and that's not really what we're bringing home. So we're spending more than we're actually bringing home, or, or we, we're we're living above our means a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Some sometimes you have to take a step back to take several steps forward. Right. You might have to downsize that fifteen hundred dollar apartment. You might have to downsize from um, that eight hundred dollar iPhone and use that money to pay down debt or catch up on, on payments. Late payments get a lot of people. You have to make your payments on time. It is imperative that you make your payments on time. That affects your credit immensely. Okay. And as a credit agent, do you see that often when you are when you're um when you're dealing with your clients that a lot of people are caught in this late payment? And what do you guys offer them if they're caught in a circumstance where it's it's hard to pay it on time, just due to the right. fact, like you're saying, they don't they're they're utilizing their gross payment as something that they have. When in reality, they don't have that because after yeah. taxes, you have half of that, if that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what I would say to that, it is important to so to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. and and really and really see what you got going in and what you got coming out. Right. Because a lot of people don't, they, they just keep purchasing, 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 but they're not looking at what they have, what they have coming in versus what they have going out. So mm -hmm. when you get to the first of the month and everything is due, you don't, you, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't plan for that. Cause you're, you're, you're a lot of times we, we just, we have to be honest with ourselves. We, we like extravagant things, but sometimes we don't have extravagant budgets. <laughs> So true, so true. I'm going to. I know right I now. like nice stuff. Yes. I'm a little bit bougie, mm -hmm. like, but I yes. gotta get bougie on my budget. Right, right. It's so true, and I feel like even with me, you know, going even going from a little kid until now, like I've always wanted the finer things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want the steak. I want the lobster. I want the new jeans. I want, you know, <laughs> I want to look right. I want to eat well. I want to have the good things. And at first, I would tell myself, "Well, it's okay. You know what I mean? I deserve it." And that's all yeah. well and good, right? You, you can deserve it all you want to, but can you afford it? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Can you afford it? Will it put you in debt? And once you get in debt, how the hell are you going to get out of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it's all well and good. It's cute to, to have all those things as long as you said, as long as it's within your means, as long yeah. as it stays within your budget. One of the things that I would want to ask you is, what are some misconceptions that people may have when it comes to financial literacy? A lot of times, people, uh, it, 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 you can look this up, four out of five credit scores have some type of obsolete, derogatory, or in, inaccurate information on it. Mm. Mm. And, and a lot of times, we have things that are inaccurate, obsolete on there, and we don't know it, and it's, and it's affecting our credit score. Things like uh, medical bills, that, that is a HIPAA violation to have medical, medical bills on your credit report. Like, you don't know, so you don't know how to, to uh, better yourself. Right. That's why you have to get the information. You have to utilize the resources around you. Mm -hmm. I find, I talk to hundreds of people on a weekly basis, and I, I find a lot of times that people be like, oh, I'll, I'm going to put it off. I'm going to put it off tomorrow. I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it later. And we keep saying that we're going to do it later, but it later never comes. Right. And then we are faced in the position where we're offered things like homes or cars or opportunities, and we can't take them because we didn't prepare. Copy that. I agree. I 100% agree. So one of the things that you're talking about, and I, I, I actually am in such a great do is being aware. And I feel like um, we're not we're not made aware, right? So, what do you have? What advice can you give to those who are struggling right now to finance their money and to kind of manage their money? What advice can you give them, and what what programs or what things that they can look up and go to to kind of get their lives back financially? I'm gonna say you have to take small steps. You, you a lot of times we, we tend to get overwhelmed because we try to go for for it to correct everything in its entirety, but we need to take step one. Step one is really address, addressing addressing your issue. If your credit score, it starts with a three, four, five, six, you need to come see me. 
<laughs> because you're not, you're going to pay crazy yes. interest. Yes. People wind up paying double for their cars yes. because their because their because their credit is so bad and the interest rate is so high. Mm -hmm. You I can agree. cut. You can actually refinance once your credit score is better and you'll save money. There's ways you can refinance your house once your credit is straight and get a better interest rate. But you have to do the work. Right. Right. I agree. You're not, you're not going to be able to get around it. I tell people, I can go out on a Friday night uh, with my friends, with my boyfriend, and we can spend $90, $100, $150 drinking, eating, and carrying on. Why wouldn't I take that and, and, and invest that in my financial future? Why wouldn't I take that and, and go and go and get my credit fixed, go and uh, pay down some stuff, go and get out of debt, do things to get out of debt. It's so imperative that you take the financial steps in yes. the right direction. Yes. We're 30 years old right now. 40, 40 going to come around quick. You yep. don't want to be in a, in a position that you can't send your kids to college, That's that true. you can't get a credit card because you cause you, cause you need tires for your car because your engine your engine is out. There are so many people right now that's facing serious crisis and they don't have any money and they don't have any resources. And if they look, their credit is bad. Right. They're looking. Right. They're looking at how you pay pay back, mm -hmm. how how you manage your money. Right. You should only be utilizing thirty percent of your credit card. Right. You should not be maxing out your credit card. Mm hmm. Well, let's just take this. We need I'm to now take this time, and we need to become more aware. We need to take this time and be honest with ourselves. Take this time yeah. and know that at the end of the day, you, living above your means is not cute. It's not okay. And as a generation right now, we can't we can't advocate for anything in financial literacy if we are not uh, ourselves literate. So I want to take Correct. this time and tell you, I thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking this call and being a thank part of this episode. Me. I love you so much, and I'm telling you, I'm going to see you soon. Okay? Love you too. We'll be right back on Courtney's Corner. <laughs> world you're now listening to verse and i'll be performing so gone see i'll be feeling so gone so gone so gone see i'll be feeling so gone so gone check I don't mean no disrespect with the hit that's on your diss is a disconnect to reality. Oh, yeah, you're mad at me, so what? The casualty grows up, the mimic and the nonsense, and all the hitters is winning and sitting on their conscience. But you know, they got the high, but they feel no lie to get high to deny what is real. And the guys on the rise with the widest appeal got the most played, but ignorant songs. And I'm embittered, but I'm singing along. Cause some of them recorded, and he always lying, and they glorifying what is whole fine. And any of your lord, I recorded a recorded diamond and letter to God. Lord, I'm so all trying. Yes, I am. I'm always invested in my vision, but the present. Got me questioning the religion. I'll be looking at the windows in the sky. See, my soul ain't lost. I'm so gone. I'm so gone. I'm so gone. Gone, gone, gone. Check. Black lives really matter, of course, but what happens when you actually the atom of source? Hey, look, I ain't denying the crookedness of cops, but I'm just as shook as the crook that be looking for the ops. We're leading the system of vengeance and thoughts, but I bet you that he ended up in court with his freedom gone. Not to be misleading, but the demons we believe are strong. When it's on the self, they adopt the hatred. The prophets are not debating, but the cops are waiting. Just to blame it on rap, but what a lyric gotta do with you aiming a gat and an innocent man and his wife and child, but it's impolite to write the white the now. When you're not white, you write and write the sound. This is not hype, you run over like the smile, but I be looking that's the mother lover ever loving what windows in the sky see my soul ain't lie i'm so gone i'm so gone i'm so gone 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 trust me this is an intricate plot to give a bad name to the words hip and a hop and the police commissioner with this a recorders dismiss the bliss in the michigan waters who's this girl she gonna say my boo but i'm gonna say no way till i say i do right now she gonna act like i never was there but we haven't been together again so baby hold up before you want to run in a marriage, I think a certain love was the love of the savage, but I think you're looking under the status. I think you in love with the marriage, instead of mother lover, really not really loving the marriage. But these lessons have a greater impact on me. Whether you dead and dead and dead, you actually, you can tell it to a greater catastrophe. That's why I'm looking at the mother lover, ever lover, windows in the sky. See, my soul ain't lie. I'm so gone. 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 I'm so gone
I'm so gone, gone, gone Looking at the windows in the sky See my soul hanging light I'm so gone, I'm so gone I'm so gone, gone, gone Let me explain something to you. The way I was over there turning up, I should be arrested for it. I promise you. Um, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, the inspiration behind So Gone, please tell us, tell us, tell us, viewers, where'd you get it from? Um, I, I was trying to make um, post traumatic stress uh, a serious topic, so i um, pulling a pulling a dog food approach. So I'm trying to make a soft soliloquy where people are more connected to the sonic and then mm -hmm. later the information but then uh traditionally it was going to be a contest for mm. um um uh, uh, monica yeah but then it turned into you know a uh, excellent record so you discuss police brutality in this now was that something that from personal experience that you just added into that and if so what did you experience definitely um definitely from personal experience um from first person and third person perspective and personal experience. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I'm melanated, so um, that comes with the territory of right. the environment. Right, right, right. So can people buy this song, download this song, and if they can, where can they find out more about this? Uh, it's on all streaming services. I have a project called I Got Something to Say, uh, featuring uh, Chris Rivers, uh, Big Pun Son, mm -hmm. uh, um, Joe, uh, Mika Femme. Uh, okay. So you could go put Versa Kalp, it's Verse, AKA LP. Hmm. And the name of the album is called I Got Something to Say. So okay. It's about uh, many different uh, topics that, in my humble opinion, I feel will connect on a human mm -hmm. perspective rather than just a traditional urban one. Speaking about perspective, before we go, um, we were talking a lot about financial literacy, right. and that's something that we deal with. It's as a race and a culture and as a black men. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little about what it means to you and what do you feel we can do better as men to be more aware for our generations to be, you know, to be made up and be educated of what financial literacy is and what we can do to better our, gener our next generations? Well, because we live in a class, a society of classism, um, mm -hmm. and men are measured by their accomplishments, uh, you have to remove that concept. Once you remove that concept, then you're not living vicariously through that. So mm -hmm. now you're not worshiping money and you're just respecting that the money is just a tool for you to uh, expedite your passion. Yes. yes. You know, so um, okay. the, 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 key, the key element into that, that's where um, we like worship um, things that are not obtainable in that mm -hmm. moment. It's because right. of that class. Right. Like, like my friend Jeffrey was saying, like they're trying to grab just like trying to grab this bag that's right. unattainable, you know? Right. So let's look in this camera right here and let's tell the people where they can find more about you. Uh, go to uh, Apple Music, uh, Tidal, all streaming services. Uh, there's a, also a documentary executive produced by Bruce Willis and Russell Simmons and Queen Latifah called Hip Hop Project. That'll go give you a little origin and background. Plus, mm -hmm. I also did a movie um, and title Annie uh, Be Real was a, a co-writer on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and right now I have a record that's going to be coming out featuring Jacque from Love and Hip Hop. All right. It's called uh, Motivation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I congratulate you on all your accomplishments now and the ones in the future because you're going to blow up. I promise you that. And I want to thank all my guests who graced this stage. It was an amazing topic, and we. I hope we are now informed. Today we explored the various aspects of financial literacy and how money management influences our daily lives. We learned about the impactful experiences of our guests and engaged deeply in the conversation of continuing to build awareness around the importance of saving money and making strategic investments that would have a positive impact on our futures. Specifically, we were able to discuss the ways in which people of color in the U.S. have struggled to gain financial wealth due to their social positionality and lack of access to economic opportunity. We came to the conclusion that to combat this, just as reading and writing are taught in schools every day, financial literacy is something that should be prioritized in communities of color as early as possible. We also found that millennials of color could use their knowledge, innovation, and networking capabilities to have significant impact on this issue. 
So as we wrap up on today's show, I hope that it inspired you to consider the small everyday ways that you can make sound decisions about money management. This is an issue that has plagued us for years because we have not been properly informed about how to manage our money until it's too late. Let's continue this conversation in our communities so that we can support one another and keeping our money in the bank. I thank you so much for tuning in to Cordy's Corner, and I'll see you next week. I love you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.